Hey, Lonnie Payne here with another pinball video. So if you're ready, let's get going. Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and game. I was playing my Jurassic Park today, and the T-Rex wouldn't pick up the ball. So I was started to do some testing and realized I had a switch problem, and I thought, you know what? It's be a good time to make a video on switch diagnosis and what can cause the different problems. And just in my preliminary testing, before I even started the video, I kind of thought I knew what was going on. So I thought, you know what, I'll make a video, be kind of cool content. Well, this video is going to show you that you think you might know what's going on, but then you end up doing some testing and some other things happen. So it's kind of an interesting video. We'll talk about the different things that can go wrong with the switch and the ways you can fix those problems. So if you're ready, let's go. All right, I got my Jurassic Park here. He's playing a game, and when the dinosaur went to pick up the ball, he never closed his mouth at the bottom, so he left the ball on the play field. Happened twice in a row, so I started investigating and realized I had a bad switch. So I'll show you what exactly was happening, and then I'll show you how we fixed it. All right, so I'll show you what happens when I put it in there, and you can just watch the T-Rex go down. And you'll see that he never actually closes his mouth. So you see when he went down, he never actually tried to close his mouth, but when he came back up, he chomped at the ball, so we know the coil's working and all that signal's working. And if we go into the diagnostics, I'll show you what we found. All right, so we got the diagnostics on, and you can see you got top switch, bottom switch, uh, center switch, right switch, left switch. And what you do, and you can see when you look right now, the T-Rex is standing up and the top switch is on. But when we do the test, we got to get him in the center. So we'll hit the flipper button to the right until the center switch is on. You can see the center's on. Now we'll go through its cycle where he goes down. So now I see he's all the way down and you see the bottom switch says off. So it's not registering that he's down, so he's never going to close his mouth. So he comes back up, and the top switches. Well, I went a little bit too far. So he comes back up, and the top switch is back on. So you can see that we got a switch problem. So now we're going to lift the play field up and see what we find. All right, so we've got it open. And the switch we're talking about is this little switch right here. You can see this disc right here. And if you look in there, you can see it's got this little attachment on it. This kind of rolls against, like this is the upper switch. So this is the switch that tells it it's up. This motor spins, and that thing spins around with this linkage, brings the T-Rex down. And when it gets on this side and hits this switch and pushes it down, that's the down. Of course, you can, you can feel. We got it in switch test, and still nothing happened when we pushed it down. It would make a normal noise like any other switch. So it's something in there is not working right. So now we got to figure out if it's wiring in the switch or the diode. And we got a couple tests we can do to figure this out. Should be uh, pretty easy to figure out. We'll get, uh, we'll get tested on this thing. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to bypass that uh, diode and just get a continuity check on the switch itself. So we got our multimeter just set on the audible continuity tester. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put our leads on there and just see if the switch itself is working. One of the things you can do to make this a little easier is actually put a clip on there and put it on one of your leads. Then you're only having to hold one lead while you test the switch. So you can see as I hit the, the button, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but as I activate the switch, I'm getting continuity, still not getting any noise from the game, which means it's still not activating, so that would indicate that the diode's bad. And then what we can do to verify that is I made a little tool that I use for testing. Basically, I took two alligator clips and I cut it in the middle and I actually put a diode in there. And you can kind of see and I even put a little black stripe on the side that the, the band is on so I can see. But if you take this and put your continu or you put your multimeter in diode test. All 
All right, so you take, take your multimeter, you put your black on the side of the band, your red on the other side, and you're always supposed to get about six. So if you can see that or not, it's about 606 or so, 612. So this, this is basically a diode just in, with alligator clips on it. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to bypass that diode. So you look on the switch and you see where the diode is hooked. So it's hooked on the, the first blade and the last blade with the, the band on the bottom. So we'll take the banded side, put that on the bottom. And then we'll take the other side and put it where the other end of the diode is. So basically, we're creating a path around that diode through a new diode. So now when we activate the switch, absolutely nothing freaking happens. All right, well, what this proves is when you think you got it nailed down, but based on a test, when you follow it up with a second test, you figure out it's not exactly what you thought. The test was pointing to a diode because you can tell that the switch was actually working via the continuity test, but then when I bypassed the diode, nothing happened. Well, it turns out I went and touched this switch again and the green wire just fell off. So I think what was happening was the green wire was still physically attached, but it was such a poor connection, there wasn't enough there to actually transfer the signal and make the switch actually activate. So we're going to pull this thing out and reattach those wires, both wires, because the other one actually doesn't look that good either. So I'm going to attach both wires with good solid connections, give her a test and see what happens. So anyways, um, not sure how much of this I'll have to pull out of here, but I'm going to reattach the two wires and uh, give the switch another test and, and we'll see if that's actually the problem. All right, just when you think you got it figured out, something else shows up. So I've actually got the switch out of there now and was doing some testing. And I actually was able to pull the wires out. So you can see I've got the two wires jumpered with that diode that I made. So basically it's, it's simulating a closed switch right now all the time. And you can still see that I've got bottom switch off. And so I started messing with some wires back here. And as I was touching them, it was going on and off. And I finally figured out the wire that was daisy chained to go to the switch out of the up switch is was not really in there so it was just intermittent that's why when we tested it I was expecting to get one and then when I, I didn't get it and then I was expecting to get a test when I put the wires on there didn't get it and so I had to keep on looking and actually the daisy chain wire was out so there's no no power so when we hook this back up I expect that switch to work so we'll hook that up and see what happens all right now we got the new wire soldered into the new connector, heat shrink wrap tubing, keep everything from uh, touching anything. So now we got this switch that actually works, the top switch, and look at that, the bottom switch says on. So, you know, I've got that connector in there simulating an on switch, and so now that switch is on, so that ended up being the actual problem right there. So our initial tests were leading us one direction, actually went to plan B, and then actually found it in plan C. So it goes to show you that not every time you think you got it fixed it, that you end up with what you had because you know you might have something else show up. So anyways let's put the other down switch back in and uh, we'll see how she works. Alright I got the switch installed everything back so now we're going to go through the test. You see the top switch is on. Have the T-Rex go down. You can see Bottom switch on, so now he should be able to eat the ball. All right, go back up. All right, now we're going to play a game, see what happens. Beautiful, back in business. Well, there goes to show you, you may think you have one problem, turns out to be something totally different. And uh, I thought it was kind of funny, left some of the kind of the moments where I, I thought I knew what was going on and turns out to be something else. Thought it was kind of a neat, a neat way to do the video. Um, just kind of as a recap, you know, the different things that can happen in a switch. You can have a broken wire and, you know, if you have a, a broken common wire in a, in a matrix, say on your third switch, 
four through eight will not work. And also, if you have a board problem with a, a row or column, all the switches in that row or column may not work. So one of the ways to test that is get your switch matrix out, look at the other switches that are in, in that matrix in the row or column, and to test the board, basically, you just have to test one other switch in that uh, matrix or the row or column, and if it works, that means that it's, it's basically not the board. You don't have a whole row or whole column out. You might have an issue, you know, like I said, with a broken wire, so you might want to test the switch adjacent to it, and if those switches work, you know your, your wires are good. And then you have a, a problem like we had today where it was one of those wires. It turned out we found it in testing. And then the other problems, like I talked about, you can have a diode that goes out, and you know if you jump that diode, you can figure that problem out. I showed you how to do that. It turned out not to be the problem. And then you have the actual switch itself can go bad, whereas you get your multimeter out and test it and you know, see if you have continuity. And so you could see in the testing, we had continuity and it still wasn't testing and because it turned out to be that wire. So anyways, those are the kind of the, the problems you can have with switches and, and how to fix them. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I thought it was kind of a, a neat video since it, I started to make a video about one thing and ended up being about something completely different, but it was all related to the switches. So I hope you enjoyed it. If, if you liked, please uh, like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you on the next one.